So we've talked to the person who is in an affair. Mm -hmm. um, now, can we talk to the person who would be what my my position was the the standing spouse mm -hmm. um, who has you know just found out their their husband or wife is in an affair? What mm -hmm. um, you know? What what do they need to do? How can we help their emotions? Well, that's such a broad topic. I think, Allison, that it would take an entire program just to talk about that. So maybe we could just cut it down to one thing for this program. Okay. Sometimes people are like, okay, I don't understand how in the world he can feel what he feels or she feels what she feels. I have no way to relate to that. And therefore he or she must be the worst person on the planet. Well, so when we talk about that then, how, how to at least try to understand what your spouse is feeling. Yeah. Would that be a okay part just, and rather than the broader question, which we can do, and I'm happy to in a whole program, but kind of tie that in. So for example, yeah. uh, with your husband, how did you, how did you have some empathy for him when he was doing something that was so painful to you? Honestly, he was so, it was so out of character for him mm -hmm. um, that I, I knew that that was not who he truly was. Mm -hmm. And so it, it enabled me to see him in a different light. Um, that was not the person that I was married to. Um, I, I knew that he, like I said earlier, I knew that he was a good person doing a bad thing. And I, I, I instantly had the, the reaction that I never thought that I would. You know, everyone, um, I feel like most people have the understanding, like, if my spouse ever cheats on me, I will, mm. I, got, I, got, mm. I got my foot out the door. Like, right. I, no it's way. It's done, it's over. Yep, yeah, no way would I ever put up with that. And mm -hmm. I am guilty of that. I said the same thing. And when it instantly became my situation, um, that never even crossed my mind because I knew that, I knew that my marriage was uh, worth it. I knew that it was that this was this was not who my husband was, and I was going to stick around and fight it fight it out as long as I could. Um, so initially, it was just seeing him, uh, just kind of viewing him as um, this person who was stuck in something. I now mm -hmm. know it's limerence, mm -hmm. um, but you know, I I wanted to do all that I could to help him. Mm -hmm. You know. See, but it, it took me um, being a safe place, which okay. was not easy. Yeah, I'm sure it's not. I'm <laughs> sure it's not. Now, if you understand what Allison's saying, and, and you might be thinking, good grief, she's a whole lot stronger than I am. Well, she is a strong person. There's no doubt about that. But what we have found with many people, I mean thousands upon thousands of people, is that they typically are a lot stronger than they even knew they were. Uh, I'm, not, I'm not in any way putting down Allison's strength. She is amazingly strong. But you probably have that within you as well. And the question that Allison's referred to a couple of times, let me just elaborate a tad, because sometimes people would ask me, you know, should I try to say this or not? And my response always is, it's your decision. I mean, the fact that your spouse has cheated on you gives you the right, if you wish, to divorce him or her and move on with your life. You can do that if you wish. But then I'll ask them a question, but and because of the fact that obviously if, if my spouse is cheating on me, I see that as a bad thing. I ask, is this, as Allison's already said, a good person doing a bad thing or a bad person doing a bad thing? You see, if your spouse is somebody that's, and, and, and I've got to be careful how I say this, I'm not trying to get you to think your spouse is a sociopath or psychopath or a narcissist. There are all kinds of people in your world who will tell you that's what your spouse is. People who have no idea what your spouse is, but they have all the answers. I don't want to join that crowd because those people do a whole lot more harm than good. We've even heard marriage counselors predict somebody's or, or diagnose somebody's spouse as being a sociopath or diagnosing a spouse as being a narcissist, for example. And when we say, how many sessions did that counselor have with your spouse? Well, she never met my spouse or he never met my spouse and yet diagnosed your spouse as a narcissist? Yeah, run. Get away from that person. He or she doesn't have a clue what they're doing. They're certainly not professional and they're definitely not ethical. So I'm not here to try to do that, to try to convince you that your spouse has some kind of emotional or psychological or spiritual sickness. But I do accept the fact that there are some people whose uh, concept of integrity, whose their concept of right and wrong has never been the kind of person that you should have been with and if that person's doing a bad thing, if you try to rescue him or her, they're gonna do another bad thing. It's not your job to 
develop your spouse into a person of integrity, that was a job of his or her parents or whoever helped bring him up. And if you're quite convinced, no, this person's just one, done one bad thing after another after another, doesn't show any remorse, has no feelings of consequence, and, and therefore is repetitive in his or her actions, then I'm not going to be the one to encourage you to try to salvage that. Because if the person is like that and continues to be like that, I don't know what you can do. You say, well, wait a minute, then if the person's not like that, well, like Allison's husband, who's really a good guy, yeah, he's got charisma, very likable, certainly nothing wrong with him in the sense of what I was just talking about, but he did something he shouldn't have done. And, and it hurt Allison, obviously, as you understand. But she, did you hear what she said? She said, I knew that wasn't the man I married. Now, those are the kind of people that you, obviously you can still divorce. But if you think to yourself, is this person worth rescuing? And if, if I can help rescue him or her, what kind of marriage can we have? Now, you understand, I typically won't go on the Today Show and say what I'm about to tell you. I typically don't go on the radio and say it either. Uh, where we say, if, if you survive something like this, if your marriage actually gets past an extra, extramarital affair and you put the marriage back together the way it should be put together, typically, as a matter of fact, almost universally, the marriage is better than it was before the affair. Not because of the affair, but because of what you both learned through the affair, like how it started, what happened, how you got past it, etc. And the reason I typically don't say that on national television is so some idiot doesn't go, oh, then I should have an affair to make my marriage better. Because I'll guarantee you, some idiot out there would think like that. I hope that you don't. And so if he or she is worth rescuing, then here's what we recommend, if you can, that you do if you want to try to rescue this spouse. First, accept the fact that what he or she's doing is not all your fault. Don't start blaming yourself like, what if I, should have, if I had done that, if I had done this, if I had done the other. Now, I doubt seriously that you're perfect because I've never met a perfect person yet. And I'm sure there's some things you just screwed up. Accept the fact that you did. Learn about what you did that you screwed up because that's going to need to be fixed. But it doesn't justify your spouse being involved with another person. Even if you're not perfect. It doesn't justify your spouse's decision to do things that are a violation of the marriage covenant, okay? The contract, whatever you want to call it based on how you think about it. So don't take responsibility for things you didn't do, but be willing to take responsibility for the things you did. Now, the next part of that is try your best to understand as much as you can that your spouse probably didn't do this because he or she was wanting to hurt you that he or she got into this, particularly if it's a relationship affair, the kind of affair that we most often talk about. In other words, it's not just a sex thing. It's actually a connection he or she got with the other person. They probably didn't go looking for that. Maybe they did, but in all likelihood they didn't. Were there some vulnerabilities there? Yeah, there had to be. Could it be that some of what you did may actually have intensified those vulnerabilities a little bit? Yeah, that's possible, but it still doesn't justify what they did. But if they got into that that way, even if they're doing something now that's wrong, like having the affair. And even if, like people often do in affairs, if they've gotten mean toward you, pointing out all your idiosyncrasies, weaknesses, saying mean things about you, mean things to you, accusing you of things, even saying things like, I never loved you, or I love you, but I'm not in love with you. All the kind of things we hear all the time. As best you can, try not to take that personally. Oh, I know, I know. That's going to be so hard to do. But as best you can, try not to take it personally. Understand that's what he or she's going through. And if you can continue to be, as Allenson just described, that safe place in the sense of even though I'm hurt, what I'm going to try to do is to be the person that, if anything works, will rescue my husband or wife and bring him or her back to who they used to be, only hopefully better than they were. And by doing that, then you try to understand what he or she feels, even if you don't like it. And here's the hard part, to accept what he or she feels, even if it hurts you to accept it. Denying the fact that he or she feels those connection with that other person is not going to make it go away. Thinking even that if he or she went away, that this would fix everything is not necessarily it either. Just try to understand right now, he, she, my husband, my wife, has an emotional connection that my spouse thinks is the most wonderful thing in the world. And even though I don't like that, 
even if I can't completely understand it, I'm trying to, I need to accept that that's the way he or she feels. Because if you can accept that's how that person feels now, then you can find within you the strength to be that safe place that hopefully at some point is going to lead him or her back. Now, just being the safe place is not enough to bring him or her back. There are other things you need to do as well. But obviously, we can't explain all those things in every program that we do. That's why we suggest that you go to our website, marriagehelper, marriagehelper.com, or you call our office and, and you can find our telephone number on our website. And if you go there, you can see how to contact us either by email or by phone and talk to people like Alice and our client reps who will listen and understand and can tell you how we can help if, if we're the ones who can help. She and her compatriots in our organization will help you understand that. Now, if you just want to get mad and get rid of him or her, you can. But that's not going to help things. And if you decide at times, I'm just really going to pop him or her, like, you're a scum. Let me tell your mom and dad how bad you are. Let me tell our kids that you're evil. You obviously can do that, but now you're not just hurting the possibilities of putting this marriage back together. But now you're hurting your spouse in a ways that are going to last a long time. And if you're, like, for example, involving his parents, her parents, your children, you're damaging people that don't need to be damaged. 